Hi. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper method to make an adjustment to your Streebig compact saw for healing or the blade not being parallel to the direction that it's traveling. That's what we call healing. Uh, healing is a source of, of all sorts of bad things. Uh, chipping in the panel, uh, burning, uh, blades becoming dull quickly, uh, noise, uh, all of these things are, can be attributed to uh, a healing saw blade, or again, a blade that is not parallel to the direction that it's traveling. On a Streebig panel saw, healing is adjustable independently for both the vertical cut and the horizontal cut. Uh, I always like to start uh, by testing and, and make any adjustment in the, the vertical mode. It's, uh, it's the mode that should be getting used most often with your panel saw, and it's the easiest one to start with. In order to test for healing, to determine whether I need to make an adjustment or not, uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. You can do it simply with a, 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 a back scoring or a climb scoring cut and then coming back down through uh, with, your, with your separating cut and looking at both pieces to determine whether there's a step on one side of the cut. If there is, the, the side that has the step or the shoulder in the scoring pass uh, tends to indicate that the back of the saw blade is leaning that way. So if I have a, a, a step on the left side of my piece, if I cut it at this station, um, the saw blade would be healing to the left. Uh, but I'm going to use uh, a method that I find to be more reliable and twice as accurate as, as a scoring uh, pass test, and that is I'm going to uh, make a plunge cut down at the bottom, a, a full depth climb cut, but only partway up the panel, only a couple of inches, just to mark where the back of my saw blade is, and then I'm going to come down uh, I'm going to withdraw that saw head and come down from the top and just come to that very same point that I left off with the back of the saw blade and pull the saw head out there. That will show me where the front of my saw blade is and I will see how the two meet. They should be directly in line with one another but if they're off a little bit I will see that right away. So first I want to start with a piece of reasonable size up on the center shelf this one I have is about 16 inches tall and about 32 inches wide for nice uh, stability on the center shelf and, and tall enough for me to, to, to make some, some good reference marks. The first thing I need to do is pull the driving knife back out of place. I can do that over here on the side of the saw head. I can pull this driving knife back and hold it back on the ball spring keeper. That will allow me to make the, the full plunge uh, cut and backwards cut at the bottom of the panel. I need to do this very slowly and carefully because I am again climb cutting in the panel. come down through without moving the panel of course from the top down and I can pull out when I get close I can pull the shroud away to see right exactly where I am with the saw blade. I overlap those joints just a little bit. It's hard to tell from here, but and I have intentionally put this brand new saw out of out of order. But if I look very closely here, I can see that the front of my saw blade left off to the right of the the back of the saw blade. Sometimes I will use a flashlight shining from the top or from the bottom to highlight the 
difference in the saw blade, uh, the front of the saw blade and the back of the saw blade. But hopefully from here you can see that the front of the saw blade left off to the right and the back of the saw blade is off to the left and those, blade, that, those marks are not perfectly in alignment. So I'm going to make an adjustment clockwise with my saw head. When it comes to making the adjustment, if I let my head come over here to the horizontal position, this is the mechanism that I'm going to adjust, what we call the parallel guide mechanism. And it's actually on a compact, it is the rectangular black plastic block that is the actual adjustment for the saw head um, healing. Okay, the two components on the other side of the device are really take-up units. The spring-loaded mushroom cap device here will be adjusted after I, I get my black plastic block adjusted the way I want to. This I call the dampening bolt. It puts the appropriate amount of drag on the saw as the saw goes in and out on its guide bar there. The nylon screw, the plastic screw here, is the dead take-up, uh, which assures that there's no possibility for me to wiggle the saw head in the middle of a cut. It wants to be just dialed into the, to the guide bar uh, up at the top here. The guide bar is, is where the, the, the parallel guide acts upon as you're plunging the saw head. Uh, that wants to be adjusted just off of the, of the guide bar so I can't have any slop in my cut. But the actual adjustment again here is in the black plastic block. So with my five millimeter Allen wrench and my 10 millimeter open wrench, I'm gonna make equal adjustments on the two screws here and here, okay? So I need to loosen in this case, again, I want the saw head to go clockwise. So I need to force this uh, or, or adjust this black plastic block this way to the left. So in that case, it's a regular right-handed thread that I'm dealing with here. So I'm going to loosen this screw. First of all, I have to loosen the, the lock nut that holds it in place. And I'm gonna go just a little bit and lock it back down, same with the other screw. And then I'll make another test cut. I'll do that test cutting procedure over again. My riving knife pulled back. I'll move the panel over a little bit for my next cut. I can see from my test cut that I am still off just a little bit. I got better, but I can even feel it with my fingernail going in both directions that I'm still off just a little bit. So I'm gonna make a, another adjustment in the same direction. And when those two points meet up exactly, I'll be finished.
I can see that those are perfectly in alignment now. So I am perfectly aligned for healing in my vertical cut direction. If I have a scoring saw on my machine, I want to do this pr procedure first before I go aligning my scoring saw with my main blade. Once I'm assured that I'm not healing in the vertical mode, then I align my scoring saw to my main blade here. That way, I know that it's, it's in alignment with, uh, with the main blade in, in the direction that the, the blade is traveling in the vertical mode. And when I pivot the saw head from vertical to horizontal, then either test should tell me, uh, should confirm uh, the other. In other words, if I make a test cut with my scoring blade engaged in the horizontal mode, if I'm in alignment, I don't have to do a, 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 a healing test uh, for the horizontal mode. I know that I'm in alignment. If, I'm, if I find that I'm off in my horizontal mode, then I would go through the same process that I did with the vertical cut in the horizontal mode, and it should confirm that the saw head uh, both tests should confirm that the saw head needs to move in one direction or the other. They should confirm the same thing. Um, for example, if my scoring mark is above my main blade uh, mark as I make a scoring test with the scoring blade engaged, it would indicate that my saw head is, is healing in, in this fashion here. Okay, uh, The saw blade is running at two o'clock and eight o'clock, if you will, on the saw head. If my scoring mark, scoring line is above my main blade line after I've aligned it vertically, uh, which also would indicate that I would need the saw head to be pivoted clockwise with the healing adjustment. If I disengaged my scoring saw and did the same type of test that I did here, where I went backwards into the panel from the right hand side, just a couple of inches, and pulled the saw head out and went in from the left side and pulled the saw head out just as those two points met, then that should confirm the same thing. I would see that my main blade marks, uh, the front of the saw uh, blade would be above where I left off with the back of the saw blade and would tell me the same thing, to make a, a healing adjustment clockwise. And I would do that with uh, the same types of elements, the same components that I made that adjustment with in the vertical mode. I would make them here for the horizontal mode. I would make an adjustment to the black plastic block. And if I needed that saw head to be uh, pivoted clockwise to correct my cut, then I would need to draw this block in in this case. And therefore I would turn these screws to the right clockwise to draw this block in and allow that saw head to, to move clockwise. And again, once I have made my adjustment with the black plastic block uh, to perfect my healing, then I take a look at the, uh, the dampening bolt uh, to make sure that I have the appropriate amount of drag on the saw as I, as I go in and out. I want there to be enough drag so that the saw head does not float in on its own if it's in the withdrawn position here, that it doesn't just fall in toward the panel um, when it's disengaged. And, uh, but I don't want it to be out so far that it makes it difficult to, to plunge the saw head in and out. It should be a nice, easy, simple movement, but with no slop in there and, and, and enough force to not let the saw head fall in on its own. And the last th adjustment that I would make would be to the, the black plastic screw here. And again, that's just enough so that when the saw head is engaged here, that screw is, is just barely touching at all or not touching the 
guide bar that it goes in and out on. Um, I, I don't want it to produce any additional drag. I just want it, its only purpose is to prevent uh, any, any slop in the saw head as I'm making my cut. And that's how those adjustments are made.